Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. We're excited to be uh, with you today, and we appreciate you joining us. On behalf of the Water Environment Federation, we are excited to spend this one-hour webinar with you. Today, we're going to learn more about Left Tech Connect, the exhibiting opportunities available to you and what those look like, how we and, and ultimately how we can help you reach your marketing and sales goals of lead generation and brand awareness. I see there's a mix of participants online. We uh, have more than 100 exhibiting partners committed to the Weft Tech Connect event this fall. We're at 119 to be exact. And we know many of you are online. And additionally, we have a number of partners who are still evaluating and considering uh, Weft Tech Connect and the exhibiting opportunities available uh, to you. So we appreciate everyone joining the call. For those of you that attended the first exhibitor demo, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into some of the areas as we learn have learned more about our platform and what's available to you. And additionally, some of the information if you attended the first demo, you may hear again. I'll start off with introductions and introduce myself. My name is Kate Hawley, and I'm the Senior Manager of Exhibition Sales at WEF. I'm just hitting 10 months here at the Water Environment Federation, and prior to joining WEF, I worked for another association for about seven years. And prior to that, I worked as a trade show manager for a variety of different corporations. So I'm really excited to be working with you and supporting uh, exhibiting partners as they work to reach their marketing and sales goals. I'll hand it off to Stephanie Walter to introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Walter, Director of Exhibition Operations for the Water Environment Federation, and I've been with WEF for 20 years now. And for most of that time, I've worked as part of the exhibitions team. I'm excited to be a part of our first ever virtual event and to present this information to you about that today. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started right away to let you know about what you're going to learn today. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go through this real quick. We're going to talk about what's available at Weft Tech Connect and how to plan for it, as well as the showcase types. We're going to do an overview of matchmaking, as Kate mentioned. And then we're going to talk about some of the marketing opportunities and ways that exhibitors can take advantage of those. And then we're going to talk about deadlines and contacts. And we're going to have some opportunities for Q&A throughout the presentation. So we're going to be keeping track of your questions. As Kate noted in her comments at the beginning, please make sure to submit those through the questions so that we can keep track of them and either answer them as we go in chat or we will answer them during our Q&A periods. And if we do not get to them during our Q&A periods, we will do our best to follow up with you as soon as we can. And with that, I think I'm handing it back over to Kate right now to go over what is available at Web Tech Connect. Wonderful. Thank you, Stephanie. So many of you may still be trying to understand what is Web Tech Connect and what does this mean for me? So there's a variety of different opportunities at Web Tech Connect, including education, networking and exhibitor showcases. Weft Tech Connect is a fully virtual event that will create a unique digital place for us all to gather, providing these opportunities. Weft Tech Connect enables water professionals from all over the world to learn and engage with peers no matter where they are. So within this uh, event, the features include live and pre-recorded content, data-driven connection for attendees and exhibitors, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one appointment scheduling with exhibitors and attendees, live chats between individuals or groups, and access to all of this content and including exhibitor showcases for a full year after Weft Tech Connect takes place. So moving on to that next slide, Stephanie, um, this just overviews here more about the exhibitor showcases and highlights, and we'll continue to dive a little bit deeper into that. Um, we do have a digital conference preview online. You can access it at weftech.org. This is a really nice digital piece that gives a nice high-level overview 
Um, so I do recommend you check that out. And I'll hand it over to Stephanie to talk a little bit about the mobile app. Sure. If you want to go ahead and get started on your planning or get more into get into more detail than what you can in the digital conference guide, we recommend that you download the mobile app. You can do this at the App Store or Google Play, or you can visit the online planner and the link is there on the page and we'll make that available to you as well. And in the mobile app, you can see all sessions, all speakers, all exhibitors, you can access registration, and then there are some login features that allow you to network with other logged in attendees, and then you can create your schedule in the mobile app as well. And Kate's going to go over some of our exhibitor showcase types and show you examples of those and get into detail. Great. Yes, before we dive into that, I do want to overview um, the event hours. So WebTech Connect does take place October 5th through 9th. The conference and exhibition hours are 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time with exhibitor power hours daily, Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So many of you may, may be asking, what are exhibitor power hours? So this is targeted time for exhibitors and attendees to interact. No live competing technical content programming will be streamed at this time. Though we certainly encourage you to interact with attendees throughout the week, this is a dedicated time on the schedule for attendees and exhibiting partners to connect. Um, okay, so again, as you have questions going through here, please post those to the question portion. Um, before moving into the um, exhibitor showcase type examples, I'd just like to briefly mention that a couple of months ago, we released a survey asking uh, web tech stakeholders what their interests were, what their important factors were to them as it relates to this virtual event and their participation. And specifically, they responded around what was most exciting and important to them related to exhibiting and exhibitors was um, these items. 74% responded that they were seeking to download PDFs or pre-reported content about company products and services. 67% of respondents said they want to view live exhibitor presentations and product demonstrations. And 49% responded that they're seeking to schedule one-on-one -on -one live meetings with sales representatives. So all of these comments back are opportunities that are available to you as a um, exhibiting partner. So we're gonna hop right in here and move to the first exhibitor showcase option. So there are three options. The premium plus is the top tier. The middle tier is premium. And um, the first lower tier is the deluxe package. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the premium plus here. As you can see, this exhibitor showcase option includes, includes a 3D display um, option. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. I do wanna say first for all of these exhibitor showcase packages, they all include your company name and contact information, your website and social links, access to matchmaking, access to lead lists and reports, and we're gonna talk more about that a little bit later. And as a WefTech exhibiting partner, you earn one WefTech priority point, and you're also eligible to participate in WefTech 2021 advanced booth sales. So that's kind of the base available to every single exhibitor package. Now, moving directly into the Premium Plus offerings here, you can see that a um, company description of 3,000 character limit is included. Your logo is included. If you choose not to add on the 3D booth display, you can have included a customized header, which you can see at the top of this example. It says continuous innovation in chemical metering. That is the customized header. So that is included as part of this package. This premium plus package is $10,000 rate for members and $13,000 for non-members. 
Um, continuing, you have access to unlimited product categories. You can have up to 12 showcase contact registrations, and these are your virtual booth staff. Um, you have access to upload collateral PDFs, and in this example, they're under product de downloads. So here, these would be PDFs. Um, linked PDFs or linked uh, hyperlinks to external websites. Examples of product downloads would be white papers, case studies, and product sheets. You additionally get up to six videos that you can host here um, on your exhibitor showcase. Videos can be 10 minutes in length each, maximum length each, and they do need to be hosted on YouTube or Vimeo. Um, also included with every single showcase, as I mentioned before, is the matchmaking. And when you click on the schedule a meeting, it goes into the matchmaking functionality. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that a little later. I do want to mention with the 3D uh, booth display, if you can back up for a moment, Stephanie, to the previous page. Um, the opportunities here, again, you do have to be invest in a premium plus package. This is an add-on of $6,000. We completely help you customize it. It includes an animated introduction, a 180 degree fly-in, custom colors. You've got five interactive hotspots. So you can see the three up front on those pedestals and the two in the back. So when you click on each one of those five hotspots, it can link to text, images, uh, PDFs, videos, so you have a lot of um, flexibility. But again, we have a company um, that will help create this for you. It's really your job to provide us the PDFs, the content, your logo, that kind of thing in order to create it. Um, there is an instant chat with a specialist function as well that's available if you uh, invest in the 3D display uh, add-on option. And just for your awareness, this 3D display cannot be used beyond WEF Tech Connect, so it's specifically created, created for WEF Tech Connect um, to be used here. Another option I know a lot of exhibiting partners have asked, I already have a virtual booth that's external. Can I include that? The short answer is yes. It cannot appear embedded like you see this 3D display on the screen in front of you, but we can discuss some options where you can include a link and externally link out to that virtual booth that's outside the WEF Tech Connect platform. And if that's of interest, feel free to connect with Stephanie or I, and we'd be happy to chat more about that. Okay, so I think um, we've talked about the Premium Plus. So let's go ahead and move on to the Premium package. This is the middle tier package. So Similar to the Premium Plus package, you still have a 3,000 character limit company description. And to let you know, that does include spaces. Uh, you have your logo included. Uh, you do not receive a customized header. Your showcase contact registrations are eight with the Premium package. And you still have unlimited product category access here. Your collateral PDFs, those product downloads of your product sheets or your case studies, those are at six. So you can upload up to six of those with four videos. Um, you can upload up to four videos. Again, you have access to the uh, live meetings and unlimited access there. Um, and you also have one subsidiary listing included. Um, you do have two subsidiary listings included with the Premium Plus package I neglected to mention, and you have one with the Premium. I'm going to talk a little bit more about subsidiary listings at the end, so if you have questions there, please hold tight with us and um, we'll be talking more about that. Okay, so moving on to the Deluxe, this is the final Exhibitor Showcase package. The company description is at a 2,000 character limit here. You have four showcase registrations included. You can include up to 20 product categories. And for collateral PDFs and product downloads, these are four individual 
uh, pieces of collateral you can include and you can post up to two videos. Live meetings, you can have 30 meeting requests out at a time per each of your showcase contact uh, registrations for each personnel. Um, subsidiary listings are not included in this option. Okay, so moving on to subsidiary listings. So subsidiaries are legally related entities to your organization. So it might be a parent company, it might be a child company. Um, similar to the other showcases, you have a company name, you have a 2000 character description. This can include links. Uh, it does count against the character limit. You can have up to 20 product categories, a website, social media links, and lead lists and reports are a part of this as well. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment, but lead lists and reports, meaning any action that takes place on your showcase, if someone comes and clicks on your showcase, you would receive that lead information. I'm gonna talk more about that in a moment. What's different about the subsidiary listing is you see there's a representative contact there named Howard Dews and his phone number. You can include that information, you can include his email, but this person is not a registered member connected with this listing. So different from the deluxe, premium, and premium plus exhibitor showcases where those staff are connected and can interact on behalf of their showcase, the subsidiary is more, um, I wouldn't say static, it's a complete static listing, but there's no interaction here. So you notice there's no schedule a meeting function here. So there's no matchmaking activity. The purpose really of the subsidiary listing is if someone else knows you by another company name, they could look it up, it would populate, you'd have some brief information, perhaps a connection to your parent company showcase that has you know, the matchmaking functionality, but this is just another way for someone to find you. Um, so that is the subsidiary listing. And if we go to the next slide, this just overviews some of the a la carte options we've talked about. If a subsidiary listing is not included as part of your package, or you'd like to add additional subsidiaries outside your allotment for your exhibitor showcase, this is a great opportunity to um, use the a la carte option here. We also have the press kit, the 3D booth display I talked about as well. Now, something we haven't seen yet is that 20 minute exhibitor demo with interactive chat. So this is exhibitors have an opportunity to purchase a 20 minute exhibitor demo with the interactive chat. This will be live on the session side of the platform. So not on your exhibitor showcase page. For this demo, you will pre-record content providing a video demo and or a combination with PowerPoint to create your content. You'll upload that with us, and then it will be posted and shared during a specific date and time during exhibitor power hours. So between 12.30 and 2.30, Monday through Friday, you would have a designated 20 minute time that this would be posted. When it's posted and during your timed session, you will have um, an interactive chat available where you'll be able to converse back and forth with attendees live, answering their quest questions related to the demo that you're presenting. Um, so that is the exhibitor demo. And then also just a final um, option a la carte, every single exhibitor showcase beyond the included exhibitor showcase registrations, you can purchase up to an additional 20 per showcase for $100 each. And just to let you know, exhibitor personnel have full access to the entire platform, meaning not only can they interact in the matchmaking and, and work on behalf of the exhibiting company, they also have access to the full technical program during WEF Tech Connect and also post WEF Tech Connect for an entire year. Um, so that is that. And then I think the last piece there you saw, you can download more information in the contract. Um, West Tech Connect lead capture and reporting. So this is very important and one of the great attractors I see with the West Tech Connect platform. Anytime someone comes onto your exhibitor showcase for every 
single attendee that touches your showcase, it will be tracked. When every WEF Tech Connect participant logs in on October 5th, they will be given an opt-in or opt-out to share their information. Pending all opt-ins, all the opt-in participants are saying that if they touch your showcase, you will be shared that lead contact information. So if someone clicks on a particular video or a particular uh, product download, case study, something on your profile, you'll be notified exactly what they clicked on, their name and their contact information. This full report will be sent to you after the WEF Tech Connect event, about a week after. And then also after WEF Tech Connect, as I shared before, participants have access to the platform for a full year. So though the matchmaking only takes place during WEF Tech Connect October 5th through 9, the platform continues to live so attendees can go back and review a technical program that they missed. Maybe they're experiencing a challenge at work and they want to go on and find a particular product and solution and search for that exhibitor that might provide it. So anytime someone comes to your showcase for a full year after, that will be counted as a lead and you will continue to receive subsequent lead reports on a regular basis for a full year after. We're gonna talk more about the matchmaking in a moment, but I just wanna let you know that as part of the lead capture and reporting, when you create a live meeting, um, when you have a chat with someone, it is going to be recorded. So you'll have the time of the meeting, the individual, what their interests were, interests are. So all of that information when you create live meetings and are hosted, that's captured as well as part of your lead reporting. And I think um, we might have missed this in our um, notes, but I do want to just share that our exhibit uh, reservation deadline is approaching. It's September 1st. Um, so you do have until September 1st to reserve an exhibitor showcase with us. Um, and to learn more and to access the contract, simply go to weftech.org forward slash exhibit, and you can download the contract there. So we're going to move right into questions here. So I have seen a couple. I want to kind of go back to the beginning. There are a couple of questions here about the mobile app and scheduling and the difference between the mobile app and the desktop version. So the mobile app is primarily going to be a pre-planning tool um, for the schedule as well as for the mobile app and the desktop version. So at this point in time, the schedule in the mobile app does not connect to the schedule in Web Tech Connect, but it is a very useful tool for scheduling your time and identifying the things that you want to do. And it's going to be a very useful tool for attendees in that way as well. Um, and in terms of the difference between the mobile app and the desktop version, the I'm not sure if this question references the specific online planner for the mobile app or if this question references the desktop version of WebTech Connect. Um, but WebTech Connect as a desktop version is definitely not the same as the mobile app. However, there will be a connection between the two. So you'll be able to access WebTech Connect through the mobile app. So if that doesn't answer those questions, please go ahead and add them back in. Um, there's also a question about the buyer's guide. Um, there is not a direct connection between the two. Uh, we do have links from the mobile app to the buyer's guide. The online planner is going to be available throughout the conference and much like WEF Tech Connect, the online planner will be available after as well. And then we've got some questions referencing the matchmaking, so I'll save those for when we get to that part. Let's see what else. There's a separate um, submission form for basically all of the content for the exhibitor showcases. So everything that you're submitting right now is going to get transferred over um, in terms of your directory descriptions, but you'll have an opportunity to flesh those out with HTML and links and, it, and as well as 
update your PDFs and the video links and everything else. And that, as you're going to see later, is going to be available to you by the end of the week. Um, so that should answer the question about the character counts, as well as how you're going to provide your information for the showcases. Um, for linking subsidiaries back to the primaries, we will talk to each of you individually about that. That's going to be probably unique to each company in terms of how you handle that. And there's a question here about the power hours, and I think that really deserves addressing. Kate, do you want to go over what the difference is between the exhibitor power hours and the overall scheduling of the event and how those two things are different? Yeah, sure. So the main conference and exhibition hours are Monday through Friday, October 5th through 9th, uh, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. The power hours are daily, Monday through Friday, 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. And these are, the exhibitor power hours are targeted time for attendees and exhibiting companies to interact. No live competing technical programming will take place at this time. So this time is really designed to make sure we're telling our attendees, hey, you should be interacting with exhibitors throughout the week, but we're giving you this dedicated time in the schedule to interact with exhibitors. So I would make sure that you definitely have um, your staff, uh, quote unquote, staffing your virtual showcase during 12.30 to 2.30 Monday through Friday. Um, but just know that, you know, they can interact with you at any time. This is just a dedicated time just focused on the exhibitors and the exhibitor showcases. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I want to move on to the matchmaking set section of our presentation. We will continue to monitor the questions and address them as we go on. Um, and I know that there are a lot of questions about updating, updating the content as well as lead capture, so we will definitely get to those. So for now, I do wanna talk about the matchmaking. And there are a couple of different ways to get into the matchmaking, which is kind of the heart of Weft Tech Connect in terms of obviously connecting people to other people. So the first way that you are able to access, or not the first way, one of the two ways that you are able to access the matchmaking system is through the exhibitor showcases. So when you hit the schedule and meeting button, this is the view that you are going to see. You're going to see the company um, and that they are in fact an exhibiting company. You're going to see their website, their company summary, and then you're going to see a list of booth staff. That staff list is expandable and then when you select each one of those booth staff you see additional information about them and you're going to be able to identify if you are interested in meeting with them. You are going to be able to request a meeting with them and you're going to be able to take additional, additional actions um, with those staff. If you access matchmaking from the networking side, you're going to see this view, which is more fleshed out because it's intended to have you take a bunch of other actions like possibly searching or updating your profile. So with this view, you're going to see your recommendations versus booth staff. For the purposes of this demonstration, they happen to be the same people, but in reality, you're going to see two very different lists here. So the first thing that you are going to want to do from this view is update your recommendations, sorry, update your profile so that your recommendations can be updated accordingly. Um, and to do that, You're going to hit the profile button and then you're going to want to hit a few, few key points here. You're going to want to update your picture. You're going to want to update your topics of interest. And this is one of the very key things that you're going to want to do. And both attendees and exhibitors need to do this. You might have some defaults in there, but by updating your topics of interest, the AI that's part of the matchmaking will be able to get very specific to create good matches for you and we'll make it so that in all of the people who are registered, you're actually meeting with the most appropriate people. 
you can write a summary so that when people look at your profile, they have an idea of who you are above and beyond your interests. And then you can manage your notifications, which basically turns on and off your chat notifications. And you're going to be able to manage your schedule and avail availability. So WEF is going to pre-populate a calendar of beginning and end times for meetings. This will be scheduled so that international people have good availability to WEF and um, domestic people. And you will see that the calendar shows the time, the time period, sorry, the time zone. That's the word I'm looking for. And then you will be able to mark off what specific times you want to be available for. And this applies to each booth personnel. So each person will be able to say, I want to be available at nine o'clock, or I want to be available at 12 o'clock, or I can't be available at this date at all. So when people are entering the matchmaking system to set up a meeting with you, this is what they're going to see. They're going to be able to see that this time is available, these four times are available, and these four times are available, and the rest of this time they're not going to see at all. So once you have finished updating your profile, you're going to have a whole different set of recommendations, and you're going to want to go ahead and explore this a little bit further. So you're going to see the people who were recommended for you, and then you can further refine that by changing what and who you are interested in and skipping people who you are not interested in. And the AI will further make recommendations based on that. You can look at a list of people who are interested in you. And then you can look at your list of connections. Those show here and they show on the right. And then you can look at your interested list. And then if you think you maybe skip somebody you shouldn't have, you can go back and double check that. This schedule does not show the schedule that we were just looking at. It shows the schedule of meetings that you have had and meetings that you are in the process of trying to schedule and then meetings that you have confirmed scheduled. If you want to search without using recommendations, you can search all booth staff, all exhibiting companies, or all other attendees. So to give kind of an overview of everything we just talked about, you can update your profile with the photo, interest areas, summary, calendar, and chat notifications. And then to use matchmaking, there are two different ways you can go in, using either the exhibitor profile for request a meeting or going in through networking. And then you improve your matches by indicating who you are interested in or not. And then once matches are confirmed, you can begin your one-on-one -on -one chats and meetings. I'm sure that we have tons of questions about that that we didn't quite get to. Hey, Stephanie, I'll pop in here. Um, someone asked, what about those who are registered for the technical conference? Do they have matchmaking profiles? So the answer is yes. Every single um, participant registered for WEF Tech Connect um, has their own recommend recommendations of matches and can connect and set up meetings, have meetings. So this can be attendee to attendee, attendee to exhibitor and vice versa. Okay, so there's an interesting question here about the path that attendees take to get to exhibitors. Um, and we actually did not include the slide this time, we had it the last time. And there's basically a menu. Um, there's a there's a dashboard at the front that basically has uh, shows sessions, exhibitors, speakers, and I forget what the fourth one is. And then there's another way into that, which is the menu across the top, which kind of shows the same content. And then it, when you click on exhibitor, it then shows the entire list of exhibitors. We'd be happy to walk you through that separately. Um, showing the slides or just showing a different site so that you can kind of get a better idea of what that looks like because we did not include that content this time. PDFs can have embedded web links. Um, yes, all registered booth staff will be displayed on that contact page, but again, it depends on which one you're looking at. So if you open up the 
request a meeting page to go to the booth staff, all those booth staff are going to show up. And they can be distinguished by product expertise uh, in one of two ways, either by selecting those topics of expertise on their own and then including that in the summary. So there are a couple of different ways to do that. One is distinguishing it kind of verbally in that profile. And then the other is to distinguish it by topics selected so that it generates those matches correctly. Um, those look like all the questions I am able to answer right now that I see in the chat. So I think I'm going to go ahead and tackle the next se section, which is some of the tools that we have access to. And actually, this kind of gives the answer to one of the questions that I saw in there, which is the pre-registered and post-conference attendee list. And this is not necessarily the same list that you're going to get from the people who accessed your showcase. So this is just a straight registration list that you can download at any point in time. So once you have registered booth staff, your key, once you have registered for your booth, your key contact will be able to download this list at any point in time before the event and then for up to about a year after the event. And it's going to include all of these fields. So it's going to include a lot of demographics to help you identify who you are going to want to contact at LevTech Connect. Again, we're going to talk about the mobile app. So this helps you provide the information that you're going to use to promote ahead of time. So a couple of exhibitors have already talked about the directory description and then the product categories. And these things definitely help you provide your information to attendees before they can access the platform, which they cannot do until October 5th. So attendees use the mobile app to schedule and to review items, to review sessions, to review exhibitors, to figure out who they want to see and to bookmark items. So by using the mobile app to have a very robust directory, you can start getting your information out ahead of time. To do that, you're going to direct submit your directory listing. And the link for that is on the screen. And again, you have a description, you have product categories, and then a sales contact. And the mobile app only gives you one versus the multiples that you have in WebTech Connect. We are also working with a company called Feather, who some of you may or may not be familiar with, to create custom dashboards that allow you to invite attendees to attend for free. Um, the exhibitor only registration is up to $60 for non members. And your dashboard is going to have your own branding along with the WebTech Connect branding. So you're going to be able to use this to invite your guests to attend. It's no cost to you and no cost to them. And they just use your invitation code to register. So once you have access to this in the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to start sending those out. And finally, I want to highlight a program that WEF has been involved in for a number of years. And a number of uh, exhibitors, I think, have been taking part in it, but I think that more could. WEF is part of the Trade Event Partnership Program, OTEP. And the Department of Commerce brings delegations from international countries, um, basically for the purpose of promoting trade. And they set up B2B meetings between US exhibitors and trade delegation buyers. And basically, all you have to do to be a part of this and to get set up with these trade delegates is to fall within their US criteria and have your company produce or manufacture goods in the United States. Or if they are produced and manufactured outside of the United States, they must contain at least 51% content and be marketed under the name of a US firm. And if those criteria are met, you can fill out the um, international business interest form and the 
Department of Commerce will follow up with you and start scheduling meetings. So I think that brings us to deadlines. So we had been asked earlier when access was going to be available to start uploading content, to start um, updating descriptions. That's going to be available on the 21st. You're going to get an email to give you access, and we'll walk you through that when that is available. On September 1st is the deadline to reserve exhibitor showcases and then confirm if you are transferring, rolling, or refunding your WebTech 2020 funds, you need to let us know. September 4th is the deadline to reserve your exhibitor demos, and then it's also your deadline to upload all of that content into that system, which is called LEND. September 9th is your deadline to upload your exhibitor that says updates. It's supposed to be demos. I apologize for that. Um, and then PDFs and videos. And then that is also your deadline to submit exhibitor demos and related speaker information. And then October 1st is your deadline to submit exhibitor directories for the mobile app and then update your international business interest form. So I think we are down to our last period of questions. And I see a question for Kate um, asking to clarify the difference between staff contacts and additional registrations. Kate, do you want to tackle that one? Sure. So in each of the exhibitor showcase, there is an allotment of showcase contact registration. So think of these as your virtual booth staff. So for deluxe, you have four, for premium, you have eight, and for premium plus, you have 12. So additional contact registrations means beyond that allotment, if you would like to add more staff, you can do so up to 20 additional contact registrations can be added to deluxe, premium, or premium plus showcases for $100 each. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Let's start with yep. end. So the difference between the September 4 and the September 9 deadlines, and I'm sorry about this because there was a copy and paste error there. The September 9th deadline is for submitting exhibitor demos, and that's the uh, exhibitor demo that Kate was talking about earlier. Just ignore this little line right here. And the related speaker information. And then the September 4th deadline is for submitting the exhibitor updates, PDFs, videos to WebTech Connect and reserving your exhibitor demos. So I apologize about this extra line right here. Um, we will take that out of the PDF when we upload it and make sure that when we post these deadlines online, they are corrected. Does that, yeah. Does that clear that up? I apologize. The deadline to upload videos for your booths is September 4th. The exhibitor demo deadline is September 9th. They're different. So just to clarify, Stephanie, if you have an exhibitor showcase, your deadline to upload all your materials like your logo, your PDFs, your videos, and all that kind of information to a system we will, we call LEND is September 4. However, specifically for exhibitor demos, that information must be uploaded by September 9, correct? Yes. Perfect. So there is a size limit for the linked PDFs. However, it's really large. So we don't anticipate anybody exceeding the PDF size limit that is in the, that is in the system. I don't remember the exact size limit, but it's significant. I see a question about how many exhibitors which who have signed up so far. We have, um, I think, just over 115 right now. 119. 
Okay. All right. Pretty good. All right. So to clarify about the attendee lists that you're going to be receiving, the pre-conference list and the post-attendee list that you can download from Experient through the registration portal does not include email addresses. The lead lists that you receive from Left Tech Connect both post-show and then throughout the year are going to include emails. The videos that play, there's a question about the videos that play within the showcase and those should not move on to the next video in the playlist in YouTube. Those are just gonna stay as one solid loop within the showcase. So it's only gonna play the one. Interesting. There's an interesting question about reps by geography and I don't know the answer to that. So I will see if I can follow up and find more information. So there was a question earlier about group meetings, and then there's a question in here about the demos as it relates to group meetings. So I do want to kind of clarify about the one-to-one -one meetings that are available through the matchmaking. The one-to-one -one meetings that are available through the matchmaking are video meetings. They are similar to Zoom meetings, but you don't need to download anything in order to initiate them. So they're basically a web-enabled Zoom type meeting. You have video capability, you have screen sharing capability, you have, um, I think, whiteboard capability. And in order to initiate those, they do set up at a specific time between two individuals. The limitation on that is that you can't invite multiple individuals to the meeting in advance. Once the meeting has started, you can invite additional people to the meeting as it is going on. Um, and you will get that list of people who attended the meeting, as Kate was talking about earlier, that's going to be um, downloaded as one of your reports that is going to be available to you. One of the caveats to that is if those people that you invited to the meeting are not registered, they're not going to be included in that report. So you do want to encourage people to register to make sure you've got a full, that you've got their full list of information and a full reporting. And there is a limitation to how many people can attend those one-to-one -one meetings in the matchmaking. Those are limited to 15 people total. So the exhibitor demos, which are pre-recorded 20-minute demos and have a live chat component, do not have any kind of limit in terms of how many people can attend. Those are at a pre-selected time. Once you purchase that demo and say you want it at Tuesday the 6th at 2 p.m. We're gonna schedule it for Tuesday the 6th at 2 p.m. It's gonna show up in the content as a technical session under whatever title you give us. You're going to upload it into a different CMS system. You're going to upload it. You're going to have speakers. You're going to have speaker bios. It's going to look for all intents and purposes, just like a technical session. You're going to have speakers who are handling the chat in that. And that is going to go on for 20 minutes. So all attendees are going to be able to view that and see that and participate in that versus inviting specific people to a one on one meeting and then adding other people to that. The matchmaking video meetings technically have a time limit. They um, are going to have a pre-selected time limit of 30 minutes. However, once people are in there, um, you can stay in that meeting for longer. So it's going to be a pre-selected 30 minute meeting, but you, as long as the organizer of that meeting is still in there and you're still talking, it will not close down on you. We have about 1,100 attendees so far.
there is a request here for a mock virtual meeting session. And as soon as we have the ability to do that, we will do our best to um, either provide a video of that or invite you to another demo. And then there's a question about, will we provide anonymous visitor data if somebody chooses not to share information? Yes, we'll be able to do that. The reason for the deadlines that we have in the system are that we need to finalize what is posted for the website. So unlike a live meeting where you can kind of go in and, and shift things around and, you know, move a thing to a corner and say, you know what, I don't want it there. I want to move it to another corner. We actually have some hard deadlines that we need to live with in terms of the website. So while we are giving you that September 4th deadline, you will have a chance to review your materials after that and make some changes. So the additional details about that are going to be provided within the next week. So we will give you some updates as to when you're going to have your last looks and when you're going to be able to make some changes to everything. So that is just an upload deadline. That is not a things have to be 100% final deadline. So I know I've seen a number of questions about that. So please don't be concerned that everything has to be absolutely final, absolutely done by September 4th. We just want all of your materials uploaded by September 4th. I'm trying to get through the rest of these questions and see what we have. Stephanie, I can hop in here quick. It says, how many non-exhibitor attendees are registered currently? So as of yesterday, we were at 1,136, and I believe it was 73 or 78 that were exhibitor personnel. Um, so the majority of them are full conference attendees. Okay. And then I'm seeing another question here about the 3D booth links and the five hotspots. And yes, those are in addition to the other downloads and videos that are in the showcase. I think we have the, the web browsers and other technical details are um, listed in the FAQ and I will post a link to that as well when we send out the recording because I can't remember off the top of my head. Apologize for the silence. I'm kind of trying to see if there's anything. Else that we have to uh, I'm sorry. I hope you didn't just say that. Are you going to have a simulation of what a visitor would see at the show? Yes, um, but it's going to be closer after we have access to our own site. And that's one of the reasons that we haven't been able to provide that yet. Because at this point in time, we haven't seen our own site yet. So. To date, you have seen lockups and you have seen um, some options of what things are going to look like. So once we get our hands on what things are going to look like for real, we'll pass that along. Somebody asked if we, the numbers that we're giving you right now are a low participation amount. We have never held a fully virtual event before. So all participation is good. And right now we're pretty pleased with what we are getting so far. We're very happy with the exhibitors who are participating. We're very happy with the registration numbers we're seeing. So we think we're doing pretty good right now. Yeah, and I will I will just add, you know, in our research and um, you know, we We've had the benefit of learning from many of our colleagues across all different kinds of industries that have held virtual events over the past number of months. Um, and what the research and data shows is many attendees don't register for virtual events until closer to the show. 
Um, and it kind of makes sense, right? Because they're not booking a hotel, they're not planning a flight, they're not planning their time away from the office. So we just passed our super saver deadline, which um, is, is a deadline where you can get the best rate to register, um, which was $299. So it's now for a full conference um, member is $399. So um, we expect more of a uptick in probably very close to the show, candidly. Um, but I will say, you know, mentioning those registration rates, we were very careful in terms of um, WEF, you know, did surveys to WEF stakeholders to understand, you know, what was important to them with their experience with a digital event. Um, and one of them was pricing. And so we, we specifically priced it in that manner to be accessible for many. Um, So we are running up to the end of our hour. Um, I think we have answered the majority of questions. If you've got any more questions, go ahead and en enter those now. Um, otherwise, we're going to wrap this up, get our PDF posted, get the recording posted, and follow up with anybody that we need to follow up with directly. I know there were a couple. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. So, ooh, one last one. Stephanie, do you want to advance to the contact page just so yes. they have a yep. question there? I totally forgot about our contact page. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to send out a link to where everything is posted. So you'll be able to download that. That'll be in the follow-up email. And then for the VIP passes, those are free to you and they are free to the attendees. So that's gonna be a code. Um, it's gonna be a registration code that you are going to provide to the attendee. And then they're gonna use that code during the registration process to have a free registration. We will do our best to include the Q&As. That's the hardest part, just because it requires ar archiving all of this typed information. So. We don't know that we will be able to include those today, but we will definitely do our best to include them as soon as possible. And I will add that just as a reminder, we are going to post this, I would say no later than probably 12 noon tomorrow on Wednesday Eastern time. We'll have this posted, will likely be before that, um, but we'll have this recording posted and also access to this PowerPoint uh, slide deck for you. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to connect with Stephanie and I. We'd be happy to um, talk to you more one-on-one -on -one about your specific questions or needs or what, um, you know, what is the right exhibitor showcase opportunity for your organization. We realize it's a lot to take in. So, um, we're more than happy to connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. Again, the reservation uh, deadline to uh, have an exhibitor showcase is September 1, um, so it is approaching quickly. And all the details that you need are at weftech.org forward slash exhibit, and all of our contact details are here on this page. All right, so we want to thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up and we will follow up with anybody that we haven't had a chance to answer your questions and get everything posted and sent out to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, everyone.